I'm Ben with the BTC Sessions, and this is your bullish bit brought to you by BitcoinWell.com, the simplest and quickest way to buy Bitcoin in the US or Canada and get it directly into your own self custody. Check them out today at the links down below. Um, governments do not fund themselves through taxation, at least not the yeah. US government. The US government borrows what it will from its own private banker. Uh, and then that banker and also some of the larger bankers and the World Bank and the WF are, are absolutely funding, uh, the IMF are funding international governments. So it's all based on debt. The money exists as a result of that debt. The money is based on debt. Um, and so taxation really has nothing to do with financing uh, government activities, right? So the question becomes, why are they taxing? <laughs> the obvious and immediate answer is because fuck you. Right. That's the, it's the obvious, it's, it's the, the lowest hanging and most accurate answer, which is just like, Hey, you know, like you got to know your place. I think it was a bug's life, the, right? the children's animated film where it's like, you let one of those grasshoppers talk back or one of those ants talk back to us. And like, they all will, they outnumber us, you know, 10,000 to one. And if they all just got together, then we'd be, we'd be ruined. So it's not about the food. It's about keeping them in their place. Uh, and I, I very firmly believe that taxation is a means of, of control, not a means of revenue collection. Um, further, it also is a way of mitigating inflation, right? By, by pulling money back in from the people and paying off any amount of the debt, you are reducing the money supply and therefore dampening inflation a little bit. So when inflation starts a little bit out of control, they talk about raising taxes that brings some money back in, helps the inflation, and then people cheer, uh, oddly enough. Um, but anyway, um, so unrealized capital gains, higher levels of capital gains, it all kind of sounds like part of the the end of stage empire formula for me. Um, it sounds like, you know, last gasps at maintaining control and controlling inflation. Um, I don't think that they could ever successfully implement any kind of unrealized capital gains program. It just practically speaking would be very, very difficult to track and enforce. So if it ever did come to fruition, I think it would cause such a stir and such a such chaos that it would have to be rolled back. Not to say that it wouldn't cause a lot of damage in the meantime, but as Danny mentioned, I think it's more political posturing, more just trying to set the the price point, right? Somebody says like, how much does your product cost? How much do you sell a server for, Matt? And I'm like, I sell servers for $10,000 a piece, but I'll sell it to you for 350. It's just setting the negotiating bar so wildly out of control that when they do raise the capital gains to 28% from 20%, that everyone will view it as some sort of a victory, right? It's just this gradual erosion and rising of uh, taxes and loss of freedom. But you got to set the bar first. You got to come in crazy with your negotiating in order to make the counterparty feel like they're getting a deal at the end of the day. So I don't think unrealized capital gains are a realistic thing. I do think 44% capital gains for certain income earners could be a real thing. It's the highest in history, but it's not unprecedented internationally. And, you know, I wouldn't put it beyond the IRS and the U.S. government to en enact that level of taxation.